Well, hello everybody. This is Clutch here from the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. And well, we're in Spearfish Canyon today. Beautiful little highway here in western South Dakota. You can see me chit-chatting right there. There I'm giving a wave. Just give you a nice little look of what's going on here. Oh, there we go. Good deal. Yep. That is just perfect. As you can see, this is just the start of it. Like, and you can already see from the start just how absolutely beautiful it is. You know, it's just gorgeous here. It really is. And this is, to me, a really special place to be. All right. Let's take a ride, shall we? Well, getting here to Spearfish Canyon is actually quite simple. To get here, if you're coming off I-90, you're going to want to look for either exit 12 or exit 14. Exit 14 is actually a little bit easier way to get to us because exit 14 is where the signs that say Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway. That's what you're looking for. Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway. And essentially from there, you get on the service road that's generally south of I-90. And you'll follow that down. Basically, you'll turn west on it. Basically, you'll get off the interstate. You'll go to the service road. It's on the south side of the road. You'll see a pizza ranch there and a gas station. If you're coming from the interstate side to the service road, you're going to make a right. From there, you'll follow that road about a, half, uh, about, about a mile or so. You'll see the Spearfish Canyon Country Club on your left and Stage Barn, or not Stage Barn, but... Um, oh. Um, can't think of the name of it. Uh, sandstone. You'll see Sandstone Hills Development. At that light is Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway. And from there, from that pot spot where we started with the drone, it's about that's about a mile and a half from the stop sign, and then it's automatically into the beauty here. Now, a few notes about this road. First of all, it is a 35 mile per hour road, meaning. Yes, you can go faster if you want, but a lot of things will, will hamper you uh, if it's a busy time of year, especially in the fall when the leaves turn. You get a lot of traffic that's moving very slow, about that 30 to 35 mile per hour range. So I would recommend this isn't necessarily a place to come and be all Valentino Rossi. I mean, you can try, but you're going to have a lot of points where you're going to have to stop and not be able to move very far. With this road, I would definitely, your first time through, I'd definitely go through and just enjoy it. It's not a terribly technical road if you stay within a reasonable speed. Now on a motorcycle, I'm talking that, that 40 to 50 mile per hour range. If you stay with that, that range and you're not terribly crazy, this shouldn't be too technical of a road. Now if you're coming through here trying to run 80 miles an hour, yeah, it's going to be quite technical for you. So. Use your head when you're on this road. And like I said, you don't want to go too fast because this is too good of a road to enjoy, I think. Basically, Spearfish Creek is what runs through the whole bottom of this. Some cool sights along the way. You'll have Bridal Vale Falls, Rough Lock Falls, and then also Spearfish Falls. There's also a thing called the Devil's Bathtub. I've never actually been up there. I mean, if it's one of those, if you like to hike, it's probably you know, a cool spot to go. But I'd say if you don't like to hike, don't go there because it is quite a hike and it's not, it's like a little, little tiny pool, like maybe the size of a big hot tub, about four feet deep. And that's about it. I mean, 
there's not much to it but we're not going to do that today but i'm going to show you the three waterfalls Five falls is an easy one it's right by the highway Rough Lock Falls, you're going to have to drive up about a mile or so of gravel, but it's not terrible gravel. So if it's dry and not mud, I wouldn't worry about that one too much. And Spearfish Falls is the same deal. You're going to have to do a little, you have to do a little bit of walking for Spearfish Falls, but it's not too bad. But anyways, let's do some more riding along. I'll see you at the first stop, right away Falls. So another warning I'm going to pass along to you, and the sign just reminded me, is be mindful of wildlife on this road. They like to hang out here because, well, obviously you got a nice little little stream right here, nice little creek, and it's kind of protected, it's out of the elements, all that stuff. So beware of animals, especially, just like always, right around sunup and right around sundown. In fact, I had a really, really crazy near miss the first Two, or the second, no, the first year I rode a motorcycle. Coming through here about 8.45 at night. Right about the time the sun was going down. And by God, I just about ran into a deer here. So it was kind of one of those where it just kind of come out of nowhere deals. So be very aware of wildlife. Let's get back on the bike. So, you're in this beautiful area of the world. You got beautiful places to stop, beautiful areas to look. And like I said, lest I forget, like one of the best roads here in the western part of the state. I'd say this is dim, dang near easily top, I'd say probably three in the state of South Dakota. Easily. And the reason I say three is because we also have Needles Highway and... And... Um, and Iron Mountain Road to talk about as well. Another thing you will notice is we've been here before. The first season of My Favorite Rides featured this road. In fact, this was the very first episode of My Favorite Rides. So why did we come back? Well, we filmed that back in the days when I still was using an old phone camera and it was in a GoPro mount, or not a GoPro, but in a RAM mount and the angle was all off and it was weird and it was just there wasn't really much depth to it it was basically me just recording myself going down the road and trying to talk about it the best as i could but now that we got like a drone we got a little bit more uh a little better camera setup now i figured it was now was about as good as time as any to go back and, and just revisit that and you'll notice that this season we're probably going to do some revisiting of some old videos, especially from that first season, because I'd like to reshoot that whole first season eventually. At this point, I don't know how many episodes we're doing yet or any of that. It's kind of going to depend on my mood and how many places I get to go shoot this year, so... So another thing you will notice is... Uh, like you'll notice that Hydro Homestake Mining Company, electric plant. So back when the Homestake Mine was running in lead, 
They set up power stations on creeks throughout the area and Spearfish Creek was one of them. In fact, for the longest time while Homesick was in operation, uh, pretty much the creek was dry almost all year. Through a good chunk of it, almost up to Spearfish it was dry before it get replenished with some springs and Spearfish. A lot of that because it was taken up, it was dammed up to uh, generate hydroelectric power to run the gold mine. So, that was one thing since the closure of Homesake almost, oh hell, 20 years ago now, I think, or so. A lot of that's kind of been reverted back to at least as close to originally as it was, as it, you know, was before. Eh, we're not going to do it. Not going to risk it. All right, well, we're gonna keep running around here. I think the next stop is gonna be Rough Lock Falls. So here's some other great things about Spearfish Canyon. First of all, any of the pull-offs are great. Like it's more than just like that, just uh, Bridal Veil Falls. I mean, they got so many pull-offs here. And really, essentially, it's most of them are about a 10-foot walk to the creek. And you got a beautiful place. Like you can go sit there. You could go sit for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just relaxing with the world. Like it's just that peaceful up here. Even even with the highway going by, you you get those peaceful moments. Um, if you like fly fishing, this is a very popular spot for fly fishing. I think for the most part, it's I. Can, might be I, I I couldn't tell you what what they catch up here because I am not a fly fisherman. You'd have to do some more looking and figure researching as far as uh, fly fishing goes, but it's very popular with fly fishermen. Like I said before, in the in the fall, usually about the third week of September, you'll start getting peak colors on the leaves. You see all these leafy trees right down here by the creek while all of them turn. So you get some beautiful, beautiful scenery when the leaves turn here. It's probably nothing like the Northeast, but, you know, for our little part of the world, it's pretty good. There's another pull-up spot. Like I said, more beautiful places to walk, to hike, to sit, to admire the world. You can do so much of it around here. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Let's put it this way, I, f I find it very hard to believe that you'd be disappointed coming through Spearfish Canyon, I really do, because this is a great little area of the world, our little piece of heaven. It's nice enough, in fact, there's been talk over the years of possibly even making it a state park. Which I shall say this, that if you get a chance, come check it out, because who knows, it may get that way someday. I will say this, this hasn't been too overrun with people quite yet, but we know how the world's getting. It's getting more and more packed every single day, so it's probably only a matter of time. And I could see this sometime becoming a state park, and if it is a state park, you ain't going to be able to drive through it without uh, paying for a license, I can guarantee you that. Which I guess in a way wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. Alright, let's check I'll check in with you just a bit later. Alright, as you approach Savoy, this is where our turn up. First of all, another beautiful look. Also, as we approach Savoy here, this is where your turn off is gonna be. So Spearfish Falls, you park in that parking lot and you walk to them. Rough Lock Falls, you go a mile up this gravel road here. Yes, it is gravel, but it's not a terribly bad gravel road. Also, if you're a fan of Dances with Wolves, one of the film sites is about three miles up from here. That last scene where they're in the canyons and like they're walking through the bottom and the or like the the Civil War guy or the 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 army guys are 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 coming up over the hill and they're seeing them and basically that whole last scene was filmed about two miles away from here. So if you want to check that out, feel free to check it out too. Like I said, it is a gravel road. Obviously don't be crazy on it, but at the same time, it's not 
terrible it's not a terrible gravel road let's put it this way there are far worse gravel roads I can guarantee you the gravel at the Buffalo chip is far worse than this so <laughs> or if any of you were coming out of come going in and coming out of kickstands this year with the construction same seal this is probably a little bit better than the stuff at kickstands so I would definitely recommend riding up and checking it out regardless of what you're on. Just like any other gravel road, just, you know, don't be crazy, don't use your front brake and take it nice and easy and there's someone following you, well, guess what, they're just going to have to wait. <laughs> That's my approach on gravel. Besides, I wait enough for I wait enough for four wheelers out on the highway, so or on the on the paved road. So, gosh darn it, they can wait for me on the gravel road. Another thing here is kind of just more the same, just extension of Spearfish Canyon here. Way back when, before this was all built up, used to be all the way down into there. Used to be able to walk all the way up. And if you could handle it, because it was really, really cold. Spearfish, the Spearfish Creek Corner is really, 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 really cold. I think it's like mid 50s, maybe at most. It's very cold. So <laughs> you definitely got out of that and you're ready for something warm, that's for sure.
Is this where I'm on here? This is the trail to Spearfish Falls, Third Falls. Basically, you'll stop at that. I think it's the Latch String Restaurant in Savoy. Not really town, it's what they call the area. And then you walk from there. It's about a mile and a half round trip. Not a terrible hike. It's about moderate. And I think they rated it adequately right for normal people. Because a lot of trails you go on are, well, <laughs> yeah, it's an easy one mile hike. But it's easy if you're a professional athlete. Like, so for this one, it's pretty accurate to a moderate trail. There it is. Honestly, of the three, of the three, this one is my absolute favorite. This is Spearfish Foam. Like I said, it's my absolute favorite one of all of them. Like I said, we're kind of getting sprayed on here. <laughs> Let's get the drone out, but I don't trust it to get wet. Because I'm definitely, in, I'm, in, I'm sitting in spray right now. You can't tell from the video, but I'm definitely in spray. Through a third is kind of tough here. Hmm. All right, let's go get back on the bike. All righty. Let's keep heading on down the road. So I'll say this about Spearfish Canyon. When you come through here, make sure you don't forget to go take a look at the waterfalls. Because you will not be disappointed. I can tell you that much. You won't be disappointed in the least. You'll be glad you went. And everything is actually set up pretty nice for you to get there, you know. The state of South Dakota did a lot of work the last few years to kind of build it up a little bit. Yeah, some of it's not what it used to be, but some of it was out of, uh, I don't think they had a choice because people were going to just ruin it if they didn't do something. And they made it very easy, very accessible. All three are extremely accessible. I mean, Bridal Vale, geez, it's right there by the, by the road. You don't have to go down the river bottom like I did, or the creek bottom. In Rough Lock Falls, you can ride up that gravel road, which is only about a mile, or heck, if you want to, you can stop there at that parking lot. You can hike all the way up. You know, it's not a terrible hike up that way either. And Spearfish Falls, the same deal. It's about an hour, or it's about a mile and a half round trip. It's a little bit of work coming up. It definitely is a moderate hike, but it's not, to me, it could be a lot worse of a hike, you know. 
Ooh. That's a bad angle. <laughs> That's okay. We can use this as my focus on me camera, I guess. All right, let's continue riding along. Now you notice this one little spot here where a lot of the trees are gone? So right here there was a tornado that went through here in the uh, in July of 2020. Knocked down a bunch of trees through here. So that's why you have this little gap right through here where all of a sudden all the trees are knocked over. That was legitimately a tornado that did that. And yeah, it's kind of rare to get tornadoes, tornadoes in the hills, but that just proves the old adage of if you're in the hills, you won't get a tornado as complete baloney. <laughs> like you can see tornadoes up here too. And just like that, here we are at the end. Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway. Now I'm just going to say that about that Cheyenne Crossing Cafe. I'd recommend not stopping there. It's not that good. You might get some attitude from the uh, staff there. In fact, the last time I bought something there, it was, uh, oh, I bought an energy drink. And, uh, well, the lady working proceeded to uh, chew my tail about drinking an energy drink and how it's a waste of money and it'll screw up my body and everything else. And I mean, if you ask me, it's kind of ridiculous, but, you know. And that's not just the only reason why. I just, you know, I just don't recommend eating there. You're only five miles away from, uh, from, um, oh, can't think of the name. Um, the Boar's Nest. I would recommend going there. Just my thoughts. So that was Spearfish Canyon Scenic Byway, everybody like to thank you for stopping by the Sodak Motorcycle blog today and checking out this production of My Favorite Rides. Obviously, if you're wondering, Sodak Motorcycle blog, we do videos every Thursday at 7 o'clock Mountain Time here in North America. So, please, please subscribe if you want to. I'd really appreciate it. Um, there you can hit a bell notification icon to be alerted of future videos. Hit the like button if you like the video. Hit the dislike button if you dislike the video. Feel free to leave a comment. Good or bad, it's okay. And other than that, I thank you once again for tuning in to the Sodak Motorcycle Blog. For the Sodak Motorcycle Blog, I am Clutch. You have a good day.